the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our salvation. <coughs> well, at Advent Cafe, we are taking a little bit of a break, a one-week break from our sermon series from the Acts of the Apostles. <coughs> and it happened to fall tonight, and when I said, ask Martha, so what is our reading for tonight? She said, well, you could go with the reading for All Saints Day for tomorrow, or maybe you could find something that's really scary to go with Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> So I went to the scariest reading I could imagine. So imagine with me that setting which the prophet Ezekiel finds himself in. This huge valley, picture a valley. But now, at the bottom of that valley, cover it with human bones. Femurs and skulls, tibias and fibias, jaw bones, scattered about. And now, like Ezekiel, imagine yourself in that setting, walking around, listening to them crunch, crack against one another. It is a frightening image. Although I gotta say, just like all these wonderful little cartoon images from Halloween, as Christians, as people of faith, we can always take this with a bit of a lightness. Because we know who wins in the end. Mm -hmm. And so, but let's, let's be with Ezekiel. In that valley of dry bones, not, not there by choice, just plunged into this situation. Now, who was Ezekiel? Ezekiel is an ancient prophet, a prophet to the people of Israel. At a particular time in Israel's history, all the best and brightest, all the most powerful and influential from Israel had been taken from their beloved Jerusalem and hauled into exile by the Babylonians. They have been there for years. They are feeling as dry and as desolate as those bones. And so God takes Ezekiel to this valley to help him. To help him know what to say to the people to whom he is a prophet. And he sees these dry bones, and God asks him a question. Can these bones come back to life? Can they? Ezekiel, clever man, says, oh God, only you know. And sometimes that is the role of the prophet. To go in, to speak, not knowing what the outcome is going to be. Only God knows. But then God continues with his vision for Ezekiel. He tells him to speak. 
and he gives him the words to speak. It's a promise of God. It's a promise, in fact, that God will restore the bones. He's going to reconnect them. Sinews, and he's going to reattach all the membranes, the muscles, put the skin over them. And he does exactly that. And yet, and yet, these now restored bones, these bodies, are lifeless. And then God tells Ezekiel to speak again. To speak in the midst of all these bodies and call the wind the wind like the wind that blew over creation to come into these bones and bodies and reinvigorate them, bring them back to life. Smart man, Ezekiel does what he is told. And the bodies come back to life. Confusing, eh? But God explains it. God tells Ezekiel, these bones are the people that to whom you are being sent to preach. The ones you look at every day and see them in their dryness, see them in their desolation. See them listless and without hope. Tired and worn from crying over what they've lost. Unable to imagine that they would ever get it back again. Ezekiel, those people of Israel, I will restore. The breath of my spirit will enter into them. They will come back to life. They will return to their home, to the deepest place of their greatest longing. got this. I got. Now I don't know about you, but when I am drawn into that story in two ways. The first is that a prophet. That of feeling that I, that we as a church, are in a moment where a mighty voice needs to go out to a suffering, dry and desolate world, lost and longing for what it was. Even if you go back all the way to the Garden of Eden, that is the deepest longing in each and every human spirit. To be at peace with one another, to be at peace with God. And they need to hear, to hear a voice crying out to them. God has got this. Just as God was able to create it all, God can bring it back to life no matter what we have done to it. He showed that in the resurrection of His Son, the innocent one, 
put to death. Dead as those bones in the valley. But on the third day he rose. We know it can happen. We know it is God's promise. One of the roles of the church is to be a prophetic voice. But that brings me to the other perspective from which I hear this reading. And that is as one who is in the midst of those dry bones as dry bones myself. I think all of us do that, feel that at times. We don't have the energy, we don't have the drive, the spirit. We are tired. We feel so small in the face of so much. God is speaking to us in that place as well. Breathing life into us. God has got this. All God draw acts of us our willingness even wanting to be willing is an avenue that God will respond to that first breath might just be because you say God breathe The bones are going to start to rattle. And it might get scary for a time. As the flesh and the sinews and the skin comes back on us. And we begin to move about again. Continuing love story of God's creation. It's a fall. And of God's restoration. Bringing us all back together with Him. Thanks be to God. to continue in a time of quiet reflection and prayer as I prepare the table. I believe infinitely more has some music to guide us in that.